And you know, I am yeah. I, I've given I haven't given up my religion, but I don't practice it anymore. I don't go to church anymore. I still pray and I believe in God and everything. But uh, like I haven't eaten a, eaten a piece of candy in five years. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I eat you red see? licorice when I go to the island. I'm hooked well, on is that. that right? I gotta have that one. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I eat in candy. <laughs> but I haven't eaten a piece of candy in five years. I've never drank a beer in my life. Do you crave candy? I love candy. But you, you're able to discipline yourself. Oh yeah. And I, uh, I've never drank a bottle of beer in my life. That's true. I don't and, beer either. and I don't. I gave up liquor for 1975. But when we sold Sam and Coke's boat up there the other day, I got my check for seven thousand nine hundred ninety-one dollar bill. Well, what, what did that I had two mar I had two margaritas. <laughs> well, you got your money then. Yeah. Sam and I are square. We don't know where you die. <laughs> so now you can talk with him. Your friends. Oh, I've him. always talked to him. Yeah. He is really a hell of a nice guy. Well, he just showed up again. He was at sales yesterday. He's a nice guy. He's just a little slippery to be in business. <laughs> I, I lost a lot of money in several quarters, you know. One that was the thing with he was going to manufacturing. But we would have bankrupted in order to do it. We felt the easiest way, the best way to get rid of him is to buy him out, and we did, and uh, take over the company and make a success out of him. We make a success out of him. Well, what, you know. on, on Sam, uh, since you know, we bring him up, what, Sam would cope. How is he going to be? You know, we've talked a little bit about him already. And now that you've gotten your money and so forth, uh, well, uh, I, I, people have a hard time disliking him. You know, everybody likes the guy. He's a charming guy. Hell, he was up at. Uh, he was at the boat auction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there, and we laughed and slapped each other on the back, shook hands, and that guy come. How can you be friends with that guy? He says, "Hey, I got my money out. Of you know, I'm friends now. He only owed it to me for four years. That's I collected the interest and everything, and." Uh, but I, I don't have anything bad to say about Sam, you know, I, and uh, well, I'm just happy as it can be. What's Sam going to do now? Do you I don't really know. He came up and... and will, he, will he be back in diving? Or you think he never I don't back? know. He, I think he's going to get into making some, some uh, equipment for oil companies and stuff, he said. And I hope he has a hell of a lot of luck in that. But... Uh, well, Houston, what was in Houston that you The NASGS show, the uh, National Sporting Day oh, show. Oh, I see. N A N S G A G S yeah N S G S and uh, the uh, so then uh, he's same place right yeah they're all right in the same damn and you haven't traced uh, specifically any you well know, they took you... one down to Dr Muriarty and he said that he's almost he didn't get to see it but we sent him pictures because he's almost positive there that's what mine looks like a 103 model but he thinks they're definitely Chinese stone anchors. That's pretty. It's very fantastic. <laughs> That's it, though. That's all that's there. Really. Well, we don't know. You yeah, know. I, I, we I, may I, get I, a permit to extubate something there because I think a boat definitely went down there with four anchors in the same area. But, you know, what you'd find, if you could find some Chinese pottery, man, it'd be worth a fortune. Yeah. Jeez, that's exciting. But see, you're not even allowed to bring those out of the ocean. Why not? Because they're historical <laughs> artifacts. Well, they belong to the same. Yeah. And they can just come down and pick them up and take them home. But uh, I've got permission to take them out of the ocean. Oh, just so you can... So that other people won't take them. A couple oh, people I know see. where I've been diving. They said, hey, we'll put one of those in our front yard, and I want to get them all up. And I've oh, marked them, and I, I know see. which way they were laying and everything. You have to get a special kind of uh, permit to No, you, you, to uh, bring them out, you don't. He, he said all I have to do is tell him that he's working on this project with me. But I not see. to do any excavation, you know, move any rock around or pick up any sand and move it to another area. You have to go through the ecology environment protection. Oh, I do there. Yeah. There's no special other special office no. historical. And you can lease a piece of land for that purpose. Uh, Pat Gibson and them have a piece of land leased up in, in Point McGill, uh, San Miguel, and they think there's a wreck up there. I see. So then you can do your, it has to be a legitimate archaeological yeah. Mm -hmm. study. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, I want to be. Let's see, let me get back on. Are you doing? You know, a lot of a lot of the dealers and, and manufacturers used to do the the public shows, not so much the the industry shows, but the uh, the other shows like the sportsman show and those kind of. Well, things. we we haven't really did a lot of those. The last one I was in was up at the convention center, and that's when they put the submarine in the lobby there. And then they had a big diving display where all the dealers went in and put displays. Now, SAS will be going into certain shows like that. You know, we're going to show in Houston next year. And, uh, so we're open to the public show. Yeah. But uh, 
the uh, shop is not going to do anything like that because we signed, I don't know how many, three or four hundred people up for a single free class. You know, we're just an orientation class where they never got over three feet in the pool, but they were taught some skin diving, and then they put tanks and regulators on them, just drop them down three feet. That's all the deeper they got to see if they'd like it or not. Was that a good promotion? No, it wasn't. <coughs> uh, they weren't obligated to show up, so they didn't. They didn't have a deposit. They didn't have anything to lose. So you'd line up 12 people and say, yeah, we'll all be here on Sunday and nobody would show. And I'd be back there be teaching one person for a two-hour class for AC. But that and was so a, the idea of going into the show is to try to broaden your Yeah, I think if market. you could, uh, I think the next time we do it, maybe we'll offer it as a gift, you know. I and, uh, uh, you know, this is a gift just especially for you, you know. So many people out of the, out of the group uh, get this. And maybe if they figure it was a gift, they'd like to take advantage of that gift. But just to take advantage of a free class, you know, where they weren't obligated with money or anything. You ought to see how many people used to fail to come down, even when you had a deposit, a $5 deposit. That's interesting. Now we make them pay in full in advance. Oh, that's that right? That's that, we can get is in the that class. a new kind of thing that's happening? Everybody is going to that. Roy that's, Hauser has had such a problem with people not deposit showing up. Deposit doesn't on, work anymore. No. Because you can't keep a deposit. No way you can keep a deposit. Well, you have to give a deposit back? Yeah. There's no way you can keep a deposit now. You collect it not as a deposit as much as an administration charge? And well, you, you, you see, and I think you should be able to keep a deposit like that because you're obligated. Yeah. You have to hire an instructor. What if all 12 people show up? You'd still have to be the instructor. Legally, that you cannot keep it? legally, you can't. My wife went and bought some furniture years ago about $1,200, and I was kind of mad about it because she bought a big couch, and I, I told her, she said, well, look how many people will sit, you know, and we didn't have it, and I said, well, I don't know that many people I really like, you know, so who's going to sit on that couch? <laughs> I don't, I just don't like that many people in the room at one time, you know, I get mad and go home or something, and so I went over to look at it, and the guy said, you can't cancel out, you can't cancel out, I gave her a free ashtray, well, she put a deposit on it, and she, uh, they gave her a free ashtray to take home, and that was written right on the receipt. And as long as she took one part of that home, then the deposit was there. Oh, that's that's a sneaky way of doing it. Yeah, that's really now, if you order a guy a boat, especially for a guy, mm -hmm. and it comes in, and then he backs out because he just doesn't want it. If his financing fails, well, then you were foolish to order the boat before you found out about that. Mm -hmm. But then if he backs out, I think you'd take him to court and say, hey, this caused me a lot of problems. I can't take the boat so back. you go to court with it. Yeah, you'd have to go. Oh, yeah. That's pretty interesting. So I had a guy come in the other day and he uh, wrote it up in the newsletter. He had a gift certificate that was 13 years old. 13 years old? For $25. Oh my God. And most people wouldn't have gave him his money back. Gosh, I just, I oh. thought that was the greatest thing that ever happened. I've used his money for 13 years and never had to pay him a dime. Now all I have to do is give it back to him. <laughs> and he wanted merchandise, so he took a pair of jet pants. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat that, though. That's great. But a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, merchants I've talked to, I wouldn't give him that gift certificate. It's only good for a year. Mm. Gift certificates are good for the rest of your life. Yeah, in my place, a business. That's interesting. Yeah, that is, but then anyway, you did go into shows on try. Have you tried any in the past that were successful? You no, I have never went to a show where I really felt it was beneficial. I really haven't. Do other, do other shops tend to go into the shows? Not too Are many. They? Sam was a big guy that did all those shows. We used to have a lot of, you know, the county yeah. on them. We used to have well, But now, it, it's like just like Skin Diver, you know. Skin Diver and all of that has got just out of our our imagination on paying for that, that kind of advertising, you know. Yeah. The booths cost so much money. And yeah. I think a booth in Houston cost $2,000 for, for five days or something. And so, I just feel that, um, you know, I've been to boat, I've been to boat shows. We went to the boat show this year, and everybody's trying to sell their boats at cost. Well, you know, I can I can probably sell all the boats I got at cost if I really wanted to bail out of them. So uh, I didn't want to go to the boat show to do it. I stayed down here and sold a few boats. The year before, I did great. I never went near the boat show. Stayed down here and sold a boat every day the boat show went on. This year was really bad. Sent Kyle up there for the whole boat show, and I stayed down here and never sold a boat. Never even had a customer at Harding. Now boating's starting to break loose pretty good, but boat shows get people start thinking about it, and I think you're better off sitting in your own backyard and take care of it. I don't want to deal with people in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills. And I want to get some.